shopping report from Nick Gray of Yorkshire Television. For many years, the United States has called on the Soviet Union to allow its Jews to leave, with glasnost tight restrictions on emigration from the USSR have been relaxed. Jews are leaving in record numbers, most of them expecting to be welcomed by the United States. But the Americans' long-standing open-door policy is now under review, with plans to cut Jewish immigration by 50%, and they no longer give Jews automatic refugee status. In Italy, thousands of Jews are waiting in holding camps, and they're angry and disillusioned. Dateline's Ray Sinclair has just returned from Italy with this report. Нас в Италии около 8 тысяч человек. Каждый из нас покинул Советский Союз из-за преследований и дискриминации нас, как евреев. При выезде советское правительство лишило нас возможности к существованию. It's absolutely groundless selection, absolutely groundless. So I call it injustice. Yeah. That's if what I, I want to I say. If I were George Bush, yeah. what would you say to me? <laughs> what? Help us. Well, <laughs> help us. It's not for Let TV. We are asking for a help, yeah. nothing more. Well, what? Let my people go to the United States. I will ask him to restore justice in our case and to restore our identity with the other Soviet refugees because we, we are losing our face here, you know, we, when we come to America in some second status, so what we are expected to be, not just refugees, are some kind of persons who are just, I don't know what. And we really suffered in the Soviet Union, we really suffered the persecution, yes. we couldn't find yeah. a job and uh, many things. Because so, of, of Jews, we and now they don't believe us. To be refugees. Who are we here, you know, without passport, know without Argentina. money, without everything? The enduring image of the centuries, the wandering Jew. For decades, these Jews have been special. They're Russian Jews, suffering under a repressive, discriminatory and sometimes bloody regime that provided fodder for a Cold War foe. Let the people go, the Americans demanded, and those who slipped across borders or were released, like Sharansky and Solzhenitsyn, were treated to heroic welcomes by the West. But under Gorbachev, the Iron Curtain lifted and the heroic trickle became an embarrassing flood. Is the real alternative, perhaps, for the Soviet Union simply to stop them coming out anymore or cut the numbers? This could be one alternative. But terribly politically dangerous, yes. You're right, but uh, uh, this is the reality in this moment. Reality is Ladispoli, a lower middle class Mediterranean holiday town about an hour's drive from Rome. 20,000 people live year round in its ugly tenement blocks. But summer holidays swell the population to 100,000, mostly Romans seeking relief from the city heat on the jet black sand. But others came too, not boat people, but the Soviet Jews a continuous population of about 10,000 taking advantage of the holiday-orientated accommodation available. Allowed to leave the Soviet Union on Israeli visas as a matter of convenience, they travelled through Austria to the Italian coast, mostly to Ladispoli. Local families relying on summer holiday business see profitable accommodation taken up and summer jobs for their children taken by the newcomers for lower pay. Now we are, uh, we are uh, having a very big crisis. If you go along our road, you can see some notice in the wall that uh, people in our town are complaining about the situation, but yes. not about the Jewish people, or let's say the Russian people. They are uh, having a problem with our administration. They say, why? You allow that all these people come here. Дорогие господа, я хочу сказать только, тут нас привезли сюда, бьют и плакать не дают. 
Ведь я приехала сюда с семьей, семи человек. Осталась одна. В союзе у меня остались два сына, а здесь я скитаюсь, полядись, поля одна. Где-то подбираюсь, я себе зарабатываю семьи на, на пропитание. Когда я обратилась к Джой, то есть к Сахнута, что помочь мне хотя бы увезти в Израиле, так Сахнут мне тоже отказал в этом. Я не знаю, как мне дальше существовать и где мне дальше деваться. Я просто не знаю, обращаюсь, не знаю к кому. И никто мне руку помощи не подает. Я плачу за квартиру 190, а получаю 180. Как дальше жить и что дальше делать, я даже не понимаю. The landlords of Ladispoli do welcome the Jews. They double the rent. For these two small rooms and kitchen, they charge $800 a month. 22-year-old Gennady Schoenker shares the cost and the space with four to nine others. Gennady has been refused entry to the United States once, but he'll try again like many others. How happy are you? I'm very, happy. I'm very happy because I'm going away from the USSR. I say so, I'm very happy. And everybody here, you? His, I he's think happy? so. Ты счастлив, что ты уехал из Союза? Да. А что тебя Америка не пускает? Не очень. He said that he's very happy that uh, he's went away from the USSR. Mm. But uh, he can't say so about Americans refuse. <laughs> How many times has he been refused? Has he? No, he refused about uh, only a week ago. Oh. <laughs> His feelings are fresh. The number of Jews emigrating from the Soviet Union will soon reach 7,000 each month. Yet already the newcomers are using crudely direct methods of looking for accommodation. Ladispoli's local authorities ordered this hotel to close for safety and hygiene reasons. It stayed open, taking in Jews at the usual high prices. Mayor Siro Bajaki says need comes before quality. Questo è il problema portato dal, da questi immigranti è dato proprio dai rapporti con la popolazione residente che è portata a, ad accusare questi nostri ospiti delle, delle carenze economiche della città, cioè si sostiene che ci sono meno turisti a causa della presenza dei russi. The Jews say they're paying much more for accommodation than the normal people. Is this true? Sì, è vero. È vero perché eh, un affitto eh, alla popolazione residente eh, si aggira intorno alle 500.000 lire per appartamento mentre eh, eh, per, i, per i russi è di 500.000 lire per vano. Do you have the power to change that and would you like to? Nessun controllo. Perché soltanto la locazione stabile pluriennale è garantita da un prezzo imposto, da un prezzo di locazione imposto, eh, la cui difesa comunque è, è demandata all'interessato, mai all'autorità amministrativa. Raisa Trest, a bookkeeper from Odessa, is happy to share a couple of rooms with another family for $900 a month. Несправедливо в то время, что и мы проработали, родившись в Одессе, всю жизнь жили в коммунальной квартире, то тут я считаю, что это вполне справедливо, потому что это, я считаю, временный период, и я его совершенно спокойно и мужественно переношу. А там то, что мне уготовила страна моя советская, то мне до глубины души обидно. Raisa's husband Aaron shares her relief at the freedom of Ladispoli. So now even I think very dangerous to remain in the Soviet Union for the Jew. For even, the Jew. even with Gorbachev and Glasnost? Even with Gorbachev and Glasnost and all the uh, changes that took place, they're mainly on the words, you see, and the system remains remains so as it was in previous time. So my private opinion, and so the main reasons may be changed only in the in external politics of the Soviet Union. As to the life in the Soviet Union, all remained as it was. <laughs> 
these people have brought little with them. They had to sell almost everything to pay for exit visas. What few small belongings they could carry are now offered as exotic souvenirs to the summer holiday makers, small remnants of a life they've happily left behind and small ways to supplement meagre allowances from welfare organisations. Yet there are some things it may take them a long time to lose, such as the old fears as we film. <laughs> Sharing space with Aaron and Raisa Trest, Boris Kuperman, his wife Anna, daughter Marina, son-in-law Sasha, and granddaughter Kostya. Boris and his family want to emigrate to Australia. Sasha has a sister in this country and Boris will challenge anyone who calls him old. Ну, я хочу увидеть счастливыми своими, своих детей, потому что я была несчастлива. Мои дети, я хочу, чтобы мои дети и внуки увидели более, чтобы для них была большая свобода, чем в Советском Союзе. Я окончила железнодорожный техникум, техникум по специальности техник-эксплуатационник. Я должна была по специальности работать диспетчером станции. А работала я каким-то кладовщиком меня поставили. Ну, например, когда я школу закончила, я получила аттестат с... отличный аттестат с 5 баллов, но никак это никто не отметил, ни золотой медали не дали, ничего. Не поступить я не смог. Мы надеемся, что наше желание будет исполнено вот, в основном. Нет таких проблем, чтобы нас ну, не приняла страна Австралия. Вот. Мы будем нет. стараться, нет причин, я, и мы будем стараться, я знаю, попасть именно. Это наше желание попасть в Австралию. Желание. Мы думаем, мы попадем в Австралию. Нам кажется, что у нас нет никаких причин, чтобы нас не приняли в Австралию. Такого Мы... не может быть. Mm. Такого не может быть. Мы, Мы надеемся. Мы да. просто не думали о другой стране, и даже мысли у нас нет такой. Так, а теперь у нас будет следующий урок. Lesson 7. Six. Girls in the class. Girls in the class. Four. While most of the Soviet Jews are wrestling with English lessons for a new life in the West, Boris's family is unusual in looking to Australia. Most want to go to the United States, and their dream is fading fast as the Americans begin to see the mass exodus as an embarrassment instead of a propaganda success. The Jews smell an Israeli conspiracy. We have to deal with the reality, and the reality is that today the American government they decided that uh, Soviet Jews have to show their persecution story, and, uh, and they are not granted any more of their refugee status. Do you believe you're being forced to go to Israel? Yeah. Huh? No. Yeah, I think, I think so. Why? Because they pressed. They pressed, they pressed for a long time on us. And, and I only struggle, only struggle, only meetings, only an, another kinds of struggle. It's, it's only one entrance for, for us. But I think that America and the, the whole my life, I believed in that, that it is the most democratic country in the world. And now what can I do? How can I believe that uh, in a declaration of rights of uh, people in 1949, it was written that every person in the world can live 
in this country which he chose. And now we are forced to go to Israel. I don't want to go there. We so are here due to American struggle for our rights. Yeah. You, you understand? We that? came because sorry. of we American came, struggle. Yeah, that's right. Sorry. And now, you how do you feel about America? So sorry. We're, we're helpful yes, for, for America for their for the struggle, for our rights. But now, just now, they, t they tell us uh, to get to Israel, to, to, to go to Israel because we have a um, visa for Israel. We have a visa for but Israel. But was this the only way but you could leave the Soviet right. Union? Yes, yes, yes. Right. yes. The, yes. Only, the only way. The, the, the only, only, the yes. only one people, opportunity. Don't, don't, some people don't have uh, opportunity to go to Israel. I mean, Russian people. Uh, oh. They have uh, no any way. They can be, live in Italy. Are, are he a uh, joint trying to tell you you must go to Israel? Yes. Is this yes. Happening? Yes. They try. Yes. They, and when, when when they have a meeting with the representative of Hayes, they represent. The, there are represent the two people of Soknut. It's the Jewish organization from Israel. And the people who want who wanted to, to, to go to Israel left Vienna uh, left Vienna for Israel, and uh, they went uh, through Romania for Israel. We want only one thing. We Thank want you. only one to go to America. Thank you all. Thank we you. want to be Americans. Isn't pressure to go to Israel? They believe it's there is. They yeah. tell us there is. It's reality. These people have a visa for Israel. They have a visa for it. Which right, again, a Jewish, was really a technicality. It was a technicality. It? But now it's no longer a technicality. It's reality. You cannot go to America. If you want to file your own appeal, file your own appeal. If you want to get another lawyer, get another lawyer. Uh, it's futile. They can keep on passing in appeals. They can spend an awful lot of money in outside lawyers. It's going to be no, no, no. Senz'altro um, ha fatto senz'altro pressione proprio per ottenere che specialmente le persone professionalmente più qualificate vadano in Israele e non negli Stati Uniti. The Mediterranean. It's not the end of the line, but it's the final vast hurdle. Israel's east, but Israel is not the dream. America is the promised land. And to the thousands who are waiting here, they're thwarted by an ocean and the hidden depths of international politics. To many, it seems much more difficult to get into the United States than to get out of the Soviet Union. Towards the end of this year, the Americans quietly imposed an arbitrary rejection of about 20% of applicants, and Congress is pushing for a 50% limit. With many refusenik dreams heading for the garbage can, these emergency medical services are in increasing demand. Here, doctors help treat Jews for such things as diabetes, hypertension, and nervous problems. Former La Dispoli Mayor, Dr. Crescenzo Pagliotta, says the stress is causing unusual problems. So they are so psychologically disturbed they yes. become ill? Yes, yes. Uh, with, with what sort of diseases? Uh, every kind of disease. Mm -hmm. Because when uh, is a nervous problem, every kind of disease uh, increase. Or, uh, there are allergic problems of the skin, there are uh, insomnia, there are gastric uh, gastritis from nervous, uh, colitis, plastic colitis. And the, the same, uh, also diabetes. If one person is diabetic, in this situation, is increased the level of sugar in blood. So the, the psychological problems yeah. actually give them yes, diabetes? Yes, yes. It's yes? a very interesting um, period for uh, medical problem, I think. In this, this situation, all of this. What percentage of all the people, half, a quarter, how many, with the, with the psychological problems? Uh, in this period, I think it's 30%. Uh, 30%? 30%, 30 psychological problems? Yes. Young and uh, old. Somewhere in that mist across the Mediterranean lies the America of many hopes and stresses. The Jews, believing it is their promised land, can't explain the equally misty selection process. Misha Dubenko, a 20-year-old medical student from Moscow, has been rejected, but... I know some friends of mine, for example, uh, my girlfriend uh, got the permission. 
and uh, she has just the same story as I do. How many days ago did she leave? Half a month ago. Was there any reason that you can see why she would get permission and you would not? I can say it's on a political game, in fact. In what because, way? Because uh, we both had just equal stories and she got the permission I didn't, so I cannot explain this. Well, what, what's, how do you see it as a political game? In what way? Uh, many years Americans uh, asked Russians to let Jews, Jews uh, immigrate, to let them uh, leave the country. Now Russians don't keep Jews. And so Americans don't want to accept Jews because they have their own uh, economical problems and don't, they don't need Jews. But they indicated that they would take them, did they not? They did, and so what? Well, you must have believed it. I can only hope, you know, because I cannot do anything. I'm sitting here, I'm stateless. I have no document, and I even cannot see my case. I'm not allowed, and nobody can help me. He might have been interviewed by one officer who had a, a, established a certain criteria, and she might have been interviewed by another officer who had a different or a slightly different well, this uh, is, criteria. This is an awful human weakness. Uh, how does that happen with the Australian embassy? Well, the way we overcome that is that uh, most of the Russians interviewed in this office are interviewed by the one person. John Wimpole, Principal Immigration Officer with the Australian Embassy in Rome, is handling only about 500 applications and he says... Well, the delays are longer th than we would like and they're caused mainly, as I said before, be on the account of the medical difficulties that we're having. Well, what do you need most here now to handle that? Uh, well, we do, it's not what we need here. It's um, what the Department of Community Services and Health can do in Australia to try and streamline this, uh, these, uh, these uh, delays uh, caused by the, the applicants meeting the medical health requirements. What sort of reaction do you have yourself when you're able to tell people they can go to Australia? Well, uh, it's, a, it's a pleasant feeling. We'd like to see you do it. Well, I'm, I'll do it. <laughs> I've got good news for you. Your application for, my, for migration to Australia has been approved. We have informed uh, HIAS, and they will be making arrangements for you to travel probably towards the end of September. Thank you. Thank you. We're very happy. We're very happy. And what do you expect to find when you arrive in Melbourne? What kind of city do you think Melbourne will be? Ну, нам рассказали, что это прекрасный город, и мы хотим трудиться там, еще устроить свою жизнь, и хотим приносить пользу стране. What about learning English? Have you thought about learning English yet? А вы учили английский? Вы думали о том, что нужно английский? Знаем, что надо, и дети у нас молодые, и будем учить. Есть у нас еще маленькие дети, будут учиться, и будем преодолевать трудности. Знаем, что будет трудно. Пожалуйста, садитесь с компотиком холодный. Пейте на здоровье. Ребята, пожалуйста, угощайтесь и вы. The Bendetskis have offered traditional biscuits. Poitre, and I've come here today to tell you that we have just approved your application to migrate to Australia. The Sunelnikovs think it's a joke for just a moment. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. And the Reebucks draw an official out of his officialdom. Well, now I have to give her some bad news. They're not all as good as me. Mm. <laughs> Gennady Reebuck, appearing unexpectedly from roof painting work, is equally surprised. Mm. 
Australia and Canada are both busy in the streets of Ladispoli, their policies similar in taking almost all applicants. They would like Jews to apply directly to their embassies in Moscow. Only severe medical problems, such as TB, can cause problems. As for the Canadians, help can come on a very personal level. Toronto engineer Arkady Levin was also a refusenik, turned down by the Soviets many times before leaving 18 years ago. Probably 99% of them, they want to go to States because they don't believe that any other country would accept them. Is there anyone you can help? I will try to help one person I met, met here. They will rewrite their case. They were refused to go to, to get permission to get as refugees into the United States, and we'll try to help him to get to Canada. He would like that? Yeah, definitely, but he never thought that he would have a chance. Well, how do you think it could be arranged? I believe that we will provide uh, some financial assistance and we'll become his sponsors. Then he will have a chance, him, his wife, and a couple of children. But many Jews feel help isn't coming from the most likely place in the most unlikely location. La Dispoli's cinema has become a synagogue. An angry group is planning demonstrations and they've not been allowed to use the synagogue. They want to press for answers to their predicament. And one man says the Jews have let them down so they should approach Italy's Christians. Я единственное еще раз говорю, обращаться к христианским организациям это серьезное, но последнее дело. И нужно это сделать. Подождите, мы последнее. Я вам объясню, они почему. Они больше помогут. Они помогут. Нет, минуточку, они помогут, но мы еще пока не видим, в чем нас ущемили евреи. Кроме того, что нас не пускают в синагогу проводить собрание, это еще не судьба. Помогите, ради Бога, если вы только в силах кто-нибудь у вас, я не могу уже больше, у нас уже нет никаких сил. At the local office of Joint, enough energy to call for answers. They've defied a police order to attack both Joint, which provides living expenses until a vaguely specified cut-off time, and HIAS, the Hebrew Immigrant Aid Society, which helps process immigration applications. I would say that everybody coming out should be granted refugee status based on what the American refugee law of 1980 states is a well-founded fear of persecution. The United States government since September has chosen the State Department not to apply this criterion. Why not? Joint... There are various reasons. Maybe they must have the... given you something you no, believe or no, nothing. No, no, no. Well, I believe there's not enough money. They wanted to privatize it. Well, I think that in next future, if uh, no one uh, find a solution to this problem, we will have a dramatic situation. Not only in Ladispoli, but also in the uh, other town, like Santa Marinella, Cita Vecchia, where something already happened. So we do hope that in next future, all the organizations and also the embassy of Australia, United States, Canada, and also Israel will uh, uh, speed up the paper. So here they are, trapped in a foreign town, now at least one third of the population, with tensions on both sides and situations like this. A young family whose parents were accepted by the United States in July. This is part of the madness with the arbitrary system of acceptance or not. In such a case, we will write a humanitarian letter and I have every reason to believe the case will be accepted. But bear in mind the initial madness of turning them down. What can you say to Americans? If Americans ask you now, how do you feel about us? What, what could you say to them about what's happening? What do I say to them? No, 
I send them, I would say them that it's political prostitution, but I think they'll change their mind, I hope. Probably this young man was not able to convince the interviewing officer that he had sufficient real persecution because the officer is not paying attention anymore to the presumption of persecution. But he does, in fact, have a large family in New Jersey. <sighs> okay. report from Ray Sinclair. And just to remind Dateline viewers that next week our program will be replaced by Peter Brook's production, The Mahabharata, which will start immediately after the world news. But Dateline will be back at the usual time of 7.30, 7 o'clock in Adelaide on Saturday the 14th of October. Looking forward to seeing you then. <laughs> Thank you.